When we think of GAC movies, they're fun, witty, and enjoyable, but not everyone is like that. There are also some of those that you regret watching. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Gabby with Binge Now. In today's video, we're going to talk about the five worst GAC movies of all time. These are some of the poorest rated GAC family movies, and we just want to help you save your time. We're starting today's list off with A Lot Like Christmas. Released on 19th of December 2021, starring Maggie Lawson as Jessica Roberts and Christopher Russell as Clay Moore. Lawson is best known for her roles as if Detective Juliet now. or Jules in the Just show maybe. Psych. They'll cut you a break. At the age of eight, Lawson began her career in the local community and dinner theater plays. Later, she traveled to LA for her first pilot at just age 15, where she worked as a child TV personality on WDRB, Fox 41, Kids Club, in Louisville. While Christopher Russell is a Canadian actor who is best known for portraying the role of Lieutenant Milton Ryder in Star Trek Discovery. Back to the plot of A Lot Like Christmas. The story is about Jessica, who owns the most popular Christmas tree lot in the charming New England village of Hudson Spring. Oh, she's a beauty, Delaney. Thanks, boss lady. And this is what Jessica had to say. Well, people don't just come here to buy a tree. They come for the Christmas tradition, the experience, experience. just like dad used to say, which is my special. Jasmine finds her company at risk when big city marketing entrepreneur Clay Moore opens a big box store nearby and starts selling trees. HQ sent me up here last minute to help with the launch. Are you ready to help me make this store a hit by Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> and here's how he preferred to run his business. These trees are a proven loss leader. They bring in the customers, sales go up, corporate's happy, we look like heroes. As their professional rivalry intensifies, both of them encounter a new challenging complication, and well, they start developing feeling for each other. Do you think maybe you could give me a local tour of the town sometime? I mean, if you're not too busy. No, I, I suppose I could, yeah. But wait, before we go any further, let's hold it right there. This movie starts to annoy you a bit to the brink that you question the plot. The worst part of it being that everyone wants both of them to be together. Can I ask you something? Yeah. How is it you're still single? <laughs> I, th I think every guy in Hudson Springs would be after you. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Basically, that will solve the problem, but you cannot force someone to fall in love, right? But the Almighty has fallen, and they do end up falling in love with each other. Oh, oh my gosh! 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 Are you okay? Typical rom-com indeed. Then comes the juggling of feelings. Clay tries his best to separate his personal and professional life with Jessica. But how would you do that when she's your rival in business? The funny thing is that they start developing feelings just within 10 days or less. That was faster than the new McLaren. How did you fall so fast with your rival? But who are we to complain? There are movies people fall in love in just one day of meeting. And as much as we want to deny it, some of us find guilty pleasure in watching these kind of movies. Though the movie sounded a bit interesting at the beginning, sadly, we found it to turn out a bit boring and predictable. Let's move on to the next. The Winter Palace. Released on January 8th, 2022, starring Danica McKellar as Emily Miller and Neil Bledsoe as Prince Henry. The story is about Emily, a romance writer who is suffering from a writer's block. At least your book was in the window for what, almost 10 months? 10 months, two weeks and four days, <laughs> but who's counting? She has a tight timeline for the first few chapters of her upcoming book, which is due at the end of the month. You're a great writer, Emily, when you actually write. But word from upstairs is that if we don't see the first three chapters, at least by the end of the month, then they'll cancel your book and I'll be in breach of contract. Fortunately, Emily is given the opportunity to become a caretaker at an empty winter chateau to go ahead and finish her book. What is your role around here? I'm the caretaker. The caretaker, really? Is that so hard to believe? I just don't see much care being taken. The owners haven't been there in five years, so there's no possibility that they'll appear. This beautiful location has evolved into a writer's retreat, which has sparked Emily's imagination. She loves the warmth of a crackling fire and the comfort of maintaining such a magnificent home. However, Emily is startled by the sound of a motorcade the first morning. She soon hears the footsteps of a large group of associates. They are Crown Prince's entourage. Prince Henry, in particular, is not just any royal. He is the present owner of this beautiful estate and is also also the future king of Concordia. 
What's this? I don't know. Some sort of Emily person? What's going on here? Apparently I'm a burglar. Actually, I, I said maybe, if you recall. Well, your diligence is commendable, but misplaced. So Emily is trying to overcome her writer's block and at the same time, romance is blooming. Tonight, let's just enjoy the stars. Sounds like a star of a fairy tale movie, right? Well, it's just not a fairy tale. There's some humor thrown into the movie, but soon it becomes also too predictable. The script was written decently and the chemistry given by Danica and Neil might bring butterflies to your stomach, but it's not enough to catch the eye. There have been a couple of movies where a royalty falls in love with a commoner, but let's be honest, the relationship shown in this movie between Emily and Prince Henry seemed a little bit too unreal. This is not the first movie that Danica McKellar and Neil Bledsoe did together. Both of them worked together in the movie Coming Home for Christmas, and boy, did they have better chemistry there. We've never had that. Then you should definitely come home. It's the last Christmas at Ashford, and I promise I'm doing everything I can to make it beyond special. I don't think anyone wants me there. Don't do anything without running the gala theme by Pippa first. Up next, we have The Great Christmas Switch. Released on May 5th, 2021, starring Sarah Lind as Sophia and Kaylin, the story is about two twin sisters, Sophia and Kaylin. Sophia is a city resident who has a difficult job while also dating and having fun as a single person. Kaylin, her identical twin sister, lives in the suburbs with her two children and a divorced husband. Both the sisters are tired of their situation, and when Kaylin's husband is bringing the kids to Florida over Christmas, the sister decides to switch places just how they often did when they were kids. You know what? All right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's switch places for Christmas. Great. Okay. Well, we don't think so. Everything seems to be going smoothly at first, but Sophia is taken aback when the kids' trip to Florida is abruptly postponed and they return home just as she meets an attractive firefighter in the small suburb. Oh yeah, they're with me. Didn't I tell you that? No, you absolutely did not tell me that and you know it. Uh. Yeah, so Patrick's dad was sick and they had to cancel the trip to Florida. While Kaylin is in town, she tries to handle Sophia's career, social life, and weird roommates with some disastrous results. Hi. Hi, Cloud. How was your day? Good. Your hair's different. Yeah, I uh, thought I could use a change. Do you like it? It's different. The movie could remind you of Barbie as the Princess and The Popper, but it's far from that. The 84 minutes movie could be fun if you really just want to pass your time without making your heart or brain really work. In terms of writing and acting, both felt a bit lazy and some of the scenes were a little ridiculous too. The most ridiculous scene for us was when Kaylin was doing Sophia's job. No doubt Sophia was able to get away from her horrible boss, but professional work without any experience is undoubtedly a disaster. Imagine if the president had an identical twin and the twin takes his place. Where there must be a winner and Hey, user. <laughs> Talking of the cast, Sarah Lind is best known for her roles in the television series Edgemont, Mentors, and True Justice. Next up is Christmas Time Is Here. Released on November 13th, 2021, starring Du Sean Williams as Julian Parsons and Rukia Bernard as Nia Moore, the story is about a successful small town realtor, Nia, who is determined to close a big deal on a new resort for her client, Julian, just in time for Christmas. But here's the catch. No matter what property Nia shows, Julian only has an eye for one resort, and that resort is not for sale. And guess whose resort that is? Nia's father, Patrick, played by Tom Pickett. Patrick is a widower and he doesn't mind selling the resort as he wants to retire, but Nia is not ready to let go of the resort as it holds a lot of memories of her mother. Julian realized Nia's reluctance, but Julian's impatient boss's arrival in Pine Valley for the deal made things a little difficult. While he faces the possibility of losing his job, Julian comes up with a miraculous plan to save Nia's family resort. My dad went to every repair shop within 100 miles and no one could figure out what was wrong with it. Wow. Anyway, I wear it every holiday season now, just like my mom did. Makes my dad smile. As much as it sounds like an emotional comedy drama movie, this movie is nothing but 84 minutes of pain. Why? Because it's basically people fighting over real estate the entire time. So if you want a movie to kind of sleep throughout, then this might be the movie for you. 
Before the release of the movie, Duchesne shared his excitement about Christmas time as here with TV Fanatic. Duchesne felt fortunate to have a role in the third network original as part of the GAC family's rebranding. He was especially excited to collaborate with Rukia due to their recurrent appearances in Hallmark movie series. Duchesne said, This is going to be our first GAC family film together, but we're starring in this one. And we were able to shoot in Vancouver, Canada. It was beautiful, a beautiful location situation for us as actors. So we took advantage of being in the mountains and having a couple of hours. I shouldn't even say a couple of days. I mean, we had weekends off, but we shot the movie in about 16 days. Oh, well, it looks like they're the last one, so I'm sorry, but I really need them. You need Santa Claus lights? Yeah. Well, don't you? Douche. And for our final entry, we have Colors of Love. Released on May 7th, 2021, Jessica Lowndes as Taylor Harris and Chad Michael Murray as Michael Murray were back with another GAC family movie. This story is about Taylor, a librarian who lost her job due to a shortage of funds by the committee. And without that funding, you can't afford a research librarian on staff. Sorry, Taylor. While already living on the edge, her brother Craig, which was played by Dennis Andres, invites her to their hometown, Forest Ridge, Montana, to spend time with family and also to witness a beautiful ball night that happens at the Graff Hotel. After four years, Taylor returns, but her car breaks down on the way, and here enters the male lead, Joel Shannon. What we mean is that Taylor meets Joel, and he gives her a lift. Which way are you headed? <laughs> uh, I'm actually heading to a small town called Forest Ridge. I know it well. Come on, get you out of the cool. Huh? <laughs> it's been quite the day. I see that. Come on. Joel is an IT professional who made a lot of money after his startup film thrived in California. He returned to his hometown, Montana, in order to help the town with the best help he could provide. Joel buys Graf Hotel from Craig and wishes to renovate the hotel so that it can attract more tourists, and Taylor is not happy about it. Uh, my name is Joel Sheenan. Uh, I'm the reason that we're all here tonight. You see, my company, we bought the Graf Hotel. And with these permits, we intend to make some pretty big changes. The hotel is 100 years old, and in order to stop the renovation from happening, and also to help her brother, Taylor goes into a search to find hey, evidence. That if we find a significant event happened at the Graff, and then the hotel would be preserved? According to the state of Montana, yes. Well, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Sheenan's idea of significant is really just in his own best interest. Joel won't be granted permission to remodel the hotel if the council finds convincing evidence that it qualifies for historic designation and the heritage will be protected. However, soon Taylor falls into a dilemma when she starts to fall in love with Joel. If you get to know me better, that you can decide for yourself the person that I really am. The film fails to deliver the emotions that most of us look for in a romantic movie. There is no doubt that Colors of Love is written precisely, but the execution was somewhat not there. It has rather more information than it does butterflies. If you don't mind watching a subtle drama where you don't have to use your brain much, then this is for you. Both Chad Michael Murray and Jessica Lowndes work together in one more GAC movie called Angel Falls Christmas. And trust me, that movie has a way better storyline than this one. What's next on your list? Carolyn, please don't make me go alone. I've been told I have an angelic voice. So guys, these were some of the worst GAC movies. Do you know any other movies that would fit in this video? Let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, do give us a big like and share. Don't forget to show some love to our channel by hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Until next time.